A little background first, a palace soap drama is a historical fiction genre of TV shows that tell a story of how the emperor and his women lived in the harem. A lot of times it involves political stuff too. So the emperor, the king had one queen, a lot of consorts and concubines. And he got to pick which of them that he wanted to spend the night with. The empress dowager was the emperor's mother, everybody in the court had to respect her. She, together with the emperor had the highest power on stuff within the harem if they care and they usually don't. The queen was the second in power. According to which had a higher power after the queen, the list goes from the imperial noble consort, noble consort, consort, concubine, noble lady, higher ranked attendant, and lower ranked attendant. Basically, all the drama came from them, sometimes the queen too if she's not valued enough by the emperor or she showed weakness too often. And the maid served everybody, there were levels between maids too, most of the time it's according to their masters. So the maid of the queen had higher power than the maid of a consort, and the maids in charge of the daily stuff were at the bottom, they got bullied a lot. One step wrong and they're dead. So what the emperor does is that he associates with the nobles and takes their daughters as consorts if he likes, sometimes the nobles deliberately give away their daughters hoping to get some advantages in exchange. And girls between the age of 13 and 17 years old from the officials families of the Manchu, Mongolian and Han nationalities were required to participate in the imperial concubine selection, which was held once every three years. Although they were all fighting for the emperor's favor, it doesn't have to be because of love, they might just simply wanted loyal titles or wealth. A lot of times those poor young girls didn't even want to be in the harem, a girl was not her own person in ancient China. They have no say in their own future especially if they're born with a noble name already, all that came with is a huge responsibility. Now, I've never been big on the palace, imperial harem that kinda drama. I watched a few of them when I was small and I always feel like they're the same. A bunch of women fighting for a guy. I don't like that kinda stuff. Even in anime, I would never see myself watching a harem genre anime. Well, maybe that one time and it's only because it has you in it. Okay maybe twice. But you see, in typical Chinese palace drama, the lengths that those women would go to only to get the emperor's attention are insane. It's not as cutesy and okay like anime, and more like... babies. And the character arcs were predictable too. The protagonist is always a sweet looking girl, innocent and has a kind heart. Those qualities make her different than all the other consorts who are busy backstabbing each other or doing fancy stuff to make the emperor happy, the emperor likes that about her too. But no one could survive the harem with such a naive mindset, not for long anyway. So she becomes more and more vicious on her way to the top, to become the queen. Story of Yangtze Palace is special. I remembered when I see clips or pictures of the protagonist, I thought she was a side character. Not that she's not pretty or anything, she got strong characteristics but she doesn't look mainstream enough to be a protagonist of a huge production drama in my opinion. She doesn't fit the mainstream beauty standards. But it works, because this show is not just a typical mainstream palace drama either. And she actually does look like consortling in history. I think they took a risk casting her, and it paid off. Speaking of huge production, yes. This show is incredibly aesthetically pleasing and part of the reason why is that they didn't hire popular actors but rather just actors with good chemistry with their characters. Another risky act but it'll make the show better and it cost less.
so that more money can be spent on props and stuff but we're not gonna focus on that today. In the 18th century Beijing, the smart and witty Wei Ying will enters the court of the Qianlong Emperor, Hong Li, as a seamstress to find the truth behind her older sister's death. You see? She's witty at the start. And how did Ying Wu know her sister was murdered and not deceased of an illness like everybody else claimed? She chopped open her coffin and found struggling signs. You know, that's considered very bad in ancient China, chopping open someone's coffin is very disrespectful for the dead especially that's her older sister. But she was willing to do anything to do justice for her sister, that's some bravery. You can also see how she is different from all the other cliché harem drama protagonists simply by the way she walks when she's just a maid. Well behaved but also with pride. She knows what she's doing, she came here for a purpose and it's not about the emperor. They keep saying that born a servant, die a servant. In episode 1. She started off as a maid, she didn't think of that kind of stuff with him. She didn't give a sh about the emperor and the emperor didn't give a sh about her either. The emperor only cares about the queen. It's kinda cute to see that. And finally the queen is not about murdering babies, she is actually the kindest person in the show. Even though she's always the emperor's favorite, she remains humble and composed, wants to take care of everybody because that's how she honors the word queen. She saw her younger self in Ying Wu, so much fight and always true to herself. They both have a special place in each other's heart. With the queen's help, and being as savage as Ying Wu is, you'd think it would be easy for her to get to the top, get to the truth or get what she wants. It's really not. This show has just the right amount of laughter and suspense to make it interesting and realistic. You connect to the characters emotionally and maybe shed a tear or two when you learn that being a woman in the harem was not easy, and how deep of a price it is to become a queen. I'd recommend you to watch it but there are no English subtitles yet so I don't know why I'm making this video really.